And I'll be the first one to admit I've not done anything with this doodle bug in a while. I've been messing with my cars and stuff and trying to get other projects done. But the main reason I've not really done anything with this is that right there. So I bought a couple of tires and I'm going to take it up the street here. There's a place that changes them so cheaply that it's just not even worth trying to do it myself. It's just so cheap. And also, when you take off that back wheel, it's, it's one bolt. <laughs> it's really easy. So I'm going to make some progress on this thing today. You guys can no doubt see that I've had the chain come off here about 74 times. And also, that little thing right there came off my trailer. That's all I had to fabricate a tensioner at the time. But this is all about low bucks, man. Let's see if we can get this loose here. Looks like I'm going to need those. And that. And that. Let's get on it. Well, I timed it. That took about, oh, about a minute and a half. I'm going to put this back here. You like that purple girlfriend's idea. All right, let's grab this. See, it comes apart so easily. Let's get the new tires. I just look for the cheapest ones that anybody had, period. And that's what I got. A little warm in Florida today, because uh, it's Florida. <laughs> Let's go get this thing going. Got the air cranking in the H2. Got a huge storm coming in. I don't know, it, when you live in Florida, half the sky looks beautiful and the other half looks like uh, the final days that, that were talked about in the book of Revelation. We've got a GMC truck here ready to take out the front of the Hummer. The front of the H2 is really nice, so I try not to smoke it. Anyway, I'm on my way to Waimama, which is a little bitty town really close to where I live. And I like this particular town, and I like the particular shop. The, a really good reason is Bill Warner, who was a hero of mine back when I was racing motorcycles a bit more often. I had a turbo Hayabusa. Um, he went 311 miles an hour on a sit-on motorcycle. On a motorcycle, you just throw your leg over. 311. And uh, he, for a while, lived in Waimama. Did some tropical fish farming, which I always thought was cool, but met him at one of the races, and like a year or two later, uh, a mishap on the bike at a very high speed, and we lost him. And uh, it's affected the entire LSR community ever since then, land speed racing, so we still miss you, Bill. Anyway, going to a town called Waimama where Bill used to live for a while, and that's where the tire shop is located. Got some buddies down there who just, it's not a fancy shop, but that's why I go there because it's not a big uh, national chain. It's not a corporation. It's some guy who lives locally with his family, and when I spend money, it goes to him and his family. That's what I like to do. So let's go to my mom and get this tire mounted, get the old one off, and make some progress. Oh, I think they may have closed. Nope, they're open. This is where we're going. Now, you guys are like, where's the big sign? No, it's not a corporation, as I said. This is all about me coming to get my tire fixed in the cheapest way possible from buddies. Let's do this. Ugh. Oh, my goodness. That was some lightning. Anyway, that tire's gonna go on that wheel. It's gonna happen any moment. Gonna take off those little hubs first. I got every tire I can need here. See the little ones all up through there? That's what I'm saying. Now y'all see, this is race stuff right here. We got two highly trained technicians reassembling the race hub spindle assembly. You think it'll do 140? Tire's done. Seven dollars, man. You just can't beat that. This is all in all a pretty easy thing to do when you're lining up the tire in here, but there are a couple of things you have to pay attention to. If you look up inside there, you see that this, that little rotor right there, has to perfectly fit in between the brake pads. Make sure that the brake pads are in the out position so you don't damage them. And over on this side, obviously you have to make sure that that chain is over that sprocket. 
when you're putting all this back together, there's going to be the main bolt and the longer spacer, which is on the right side. And then over here, the bolt's gonna come through on the other side. And if you see, really small spacer in there. You're going to have to roll the tire back and forth a couple times to make sure that chain fits on there properly. Um, you can also jiggle this around. You'll get that figured out. That's not really terribly complicated. You just kinda have to make sure this is in the middle. And make sure that you remembered the bigger spacer there. Do that early on. And as soon as you get this axle almost all the way through, you'll have to slide that one on there too. Once you've done that, you make sure that that thing's all the way through. And then you put the washer on, the castle nut, get it tightened down to where that little hole in the axle lines up. I don't know if you can see that really well. Let me show you what I mean. See the hole there in the axle? Well, these little indentions in the top of that castle nut will line up, which I'll show you here in just a second. I think you guys can see that now. We line up that hole in the castle nut with that, and then we simply put this through here. Goes through the center of that hole. So that is where we find ourselves now. All we really do now is grab one side of the cotter pin, twist it, or both, doesn't really matter. A little twisting on that, just making sure it won't pop out when you're going 140 or not. This would be a good opportunity to grease that chain and uh, use some stuff that's made for the application. Use something that's actually made for a, a motorcycle chain. It has a tendency to have a high wax content in it. It'll stay on there and not go flying off all over the, the mini bike or all over you or whatever, but... With bigger riders, it's very important that you have uh, the brakes set very, very close to where they should be. Now, if you look inside there, see that daylight? Now, watch this when I move this linkage. This is, of course, attached to your, your brake lever up there. So, see that daylight just to the right side of the rotor? See it go away? That's me applying and letting off the brakes. Now, you can go about there see how there's daylight all the way through but just barely now that's an adjustable nut right there so all you really do um even if you want to you can you can put some kind of real thin spacer in there matchbook or whatever but whatever you feel comfortable with put the spacer in there pull this up undo this nut pull this up so it's perfectly tight no slack in there and make sure you can still just barely roll this with zero interference. If it feels like it's dragging, you have to come back off a little bit. But that's how you adjust that brake so you have the most to slow you down. Because we are going faster as time goes on. And slowing down is a, a part of this whole thing. <laughs> and you don't want to use stationary objects to slow down. Because it's such a quick transition between moving and not moving. Once you have adjusted that back brake to where you want it. Where it's really close. This is kind of a, a fine adjuster here. You'll notice when you look at it, see how there's like a little hole right there? That's how the cable goes in and out. Anyway, to adjust it, what we're gonna do is this back part, we're just gonna loosen it a little bit. And once we do that, we will adjust this part by hand. When you see more threads, when it comes out more, that gives you more break. When it goes in, it gives you less break. Once you have that outer portion where you want it, where it feels best, but there's no drag, just almost drag, but not quite, hold that part and tighten this part as you hold it. And then you're done. It occurred to me earlier today that while making a series about how to make a doodle bug go faster, if I didn't do anything, then that's not really a series on making it go faster, is it? So that little yellow wire right there that goes to the low oil indicator which basically shuts off the engine if it senses that there's no oil that's going away as is the little box right there that is part of that system and i'm also going to do away with see that little nasty piece of linkage right there the bent up piece that piece the entire governor is going to go away i'm going to do that on the next video 
But in the meantime, you saw how to get a tire and wheel on there. You know how to adjust the chain. You know how to lube the chain and all that sort of stuff. This is some some nasty crap that I did there to make it just work last time. If you guys know of a really good tensioner that does not wear out quickly, that's good for this kind of application, or even if you would recommend a really nice torque converter setup, then let me know. We, very shortly, like the next video, are going to have an aftermarket pipe. We're going to have those two systems removed, the low oil sensor and the governor system that will be totally removed. Then we're going to see what kind of top end that does. And then once we do that, I'm going to go ahead and spring for the kit that gives you the aftermarket Makuni carburetor, the billet rod, and the bigger springs and things like that. Because when we get rid of the governor, we also need to make sure the engine does not experience valve float. When it uh, gets to a certain RPM now, it'll just, those springs won't be able to keep up. So we're going to a bigger pound of spring that'll be on the next video but in the meantime like i said there's no real reason to check the top speed of it now because we haven't done anything yet that really affects such things so look at this as a, a video about how to put that tire on and i don't know if you noticed it's actually narrower and i did that on purpose i wanted to have the least amount of rolling resistance as possible so and i know that's practically nothing but all these things add up I'm also going to try to find a way to make it so this fender does not catch all that wind and just drive it down. I want to see if there's a way, maybe cut it here, or maybe, I don't know, I'm going to try to find a way to make it so the wind passes the mini bike instead of getting driven down right there, because if nothing else, that actually creates a bit of lift. And I can't go without the reminder, reminding you guys to please like this video and subscribe, because whenever you do, that makes it so I become... I don't know, multi-billionaire? I'm not there yet, but I'm sure any moment it's just going to happen. Please like and subscribe, you guys. We'll be back very soon with the next installment. And man, I'm going to have that engine so apart. I'm going to be tickling its innards and whatnot. See you guys.